Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to the talk. Today, I'm Morko Tennyson. Um, I'm re representing a company called Imagine Interactive Systems. Um, and I want to just briefly discuss monitoring in a contemporary age, like 2019. What is the current trends happening there? And uh, what we're doing around monitoring and so forth. So. Uh, who of you are using monitoring tools? I hope, hopefully everybody. What uh, tools are you using? Variety of tools. Variety of tools, yeah. That's the landscape we are. There's no single solution out there, usually, that covers all your needs. Uh, anybody using, who's using proprietary tools, who's using open source tools, or are you using combination? Combination? <laughs> Ping them, okay. Anybody else? Anybody using Elastic? Okay, so we've got some elastic people here. Okay, so you might see sing things from there that I'm talking about. I'm not going to do any products today. That's not my objective for today. I, I just want to, I might show some products just to highlight a few ideas, but that's not what I'm going to focus on. So I already said I'm Morko Tennyson from Imagine Interactive Systems. Um, I started off my life in a more uh, agilistic way. So I was in development and focusing a lot on there talking about when the Agile world started off, so I'm a bit old, um, in the 90s, early 2000s, worked a lot of in software development processes and so forth in Agile world, and that it just evolved into the DevOps world because that's all based on uh, uh, the Agile principles and it, that, that was brought into the operational side of things, and my operational side of world um, grew a bit more. Um, yeah, and I'm standing here on behalf of an awesome team that does a lot of these things on a daily basis, uh, the DevOps things. So we do a lot of uh, automation, so Chef Puppet, Ansible, that type of things, monitoring tools, and we support it. So Imagine Interactive Systems is a bespoke software development house, but we've been growing our uh, uh, expertise into DevOps and specifically helping customers also with their hosting solutions and so forth because you can't just write software, you have to host it somewhere. So we got into that space to support them and give them the whole spectrum of needs. Um, so the objective of today is just to give you how what we see the current state of monitoring is uh, and where it's going to and maybe just give you some insights of what we're doing. Um, yeah. Not to punt any products or anything like that, just the, the concepts behind it and what type of monitoring is out there. So obviously, why do we monitor? And I think um, your one approach could be, what you don't know won't hurt you. So if you don't do monitoring, obviously you won't know there's anything wrong. Um, that's not going to fly in, in a contemporary world. I'm sure you've been bitten by that idiom before. I don't know if you, anybody have felt pain um, for not having been monitoring things. So if you're not doing monitoring, you get in trouble. Um, <laughs> idiot, yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, but I think if you look at Peter Drucker, he said, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. So uh, what we're doing a lot more in the monitoring that we do is we're trying to measure what's going on to find out where exactly is the problems in our whole um, landscape because Unfortunately, we're not in the 90s anymore. Everything is not a monolith. We're very distributed and there's a lot of moving parts. And we need to know exactly where things are going wrong. Um, also, we believe in, we don't want to just thumbs up where the problem is. We really want to know what is the issue. So without data, you're just another person with an opinion, according to Deming. So we're trying to apply that when we do monitoring. We want to be proactive. Um, in our case, we usually find out there's an issue before any support tickets are raised and resolve the problem. So within minutes, we have a re resolution of issues uh, already out there. So the team has to react very fast. If it's human that needs to react or automatically we try to react already. Uh, and it's not only for technical reasons that we start monitoring. We want to actually utilize the monitoring to, to give business value back. So inform business on what's going on. So they need to know what's, how the business is flowing. So we're actually monitoring some of the business key uh, performance indicators uh, and show to the uh, users how, how the business people, 
how their systems are performing or their applications are performing. So that's why there's business value to it and you actually want to get quick feedback loops maybe or with A-B testing or canary dis uh, deployments and so forth. Everybody know what A-B testing and canary is I assume. So that's uh, also a nice way that uh, contemporary software development happens. And monitoring gives you a competitive edge. So in our line of work, we've you obviously integrate a lot with third parties and we've hit a number of places that people just don't monitor anything. And we have to phone up like a, s a third party person and tell them, but listen here, your system are performing very badly at the moment. Can you maybe just investigate why our calls to you are degraded with like 200%, 300%? Do you know what's going on? And then they're like, what are you talking about? And we send them the graphs and tell them this is the performance changes that we've seen in the past f uh, few hours. And uh, and that, gi that gives us the competitive edge to know exactly what is going wrong and where the integration problem is happening. Obviously, there's no silver bullet in life. Uh, just to punt another quote there. <laughs> Uh, the context that you are in will dictate it. So obviously, I think there's various contexts as we work in um, that's in front of me. Um, and I can't give you an uh, answer to all of your problems. I know what my problems is and that I'm facing and that I try to resolve. So please just bear that in mind when I do this, this presentation. Might not, everything might not bear, bear on your context. And also very important is, is your cultural. If you don't have a culture that really pays attention or see the value of monitoring, you're going to have a uh, struggle a lot. Or you might be doing monitoring and nobody knows what to do with that monitoring data. So it doesn't help you just monitor things, take out of everything, but nobody's able to use that monitoring information to, do, to act on it. So if you don't have alerting in place or you don't have a team that knows how, or the team that has access to the monitoring doesn't know what to do with that monitoring information, then you've got a problem. So culture is really needed. And that's where if you look at the DevOps culture, they, then you're more inclined to, to have success with, with your monitoring uh, capabilities. So coming to the talk, what what is the current forces at play in, in 2019? And what we see are forces at play. I think time to market still a big issue. Every year it just gets worse and worse. How quickly we need to get things into place. So um, that has a big influence on your monitoring. You can't uh, have monitoring that doesn't uh, support this time to market things that's driven by DevOps and business. Um, we're still in a very big integration oriented space and microservices are big still, software as a service is there. Um, your variety of infrastructure is just exploding. If you still might have bare metal for legacy purposes, you might infrastructure as, co as a service, you're using uh, platform as a service solutions, you m are going on to containers, Kubernetes, like we've had this talks already today about Kubernetes, uh, functions as a service, uh, network, things that you need to monitor that's changing. So it might be bare metal, uh, it could be your service providers, it could be software networks. Uh, so yeah, there's, that's, uh, there's a wide variety of infrastructure you need to uh, monitor. Um, also, I mean, all that, uh, sorry, getting back to software as a service, so you might be integrating a lot of um, platforms like AWS, which provides services you have to monitor, make sure it's working as, as expected and it's still online. Uh, DevOps, there's continuous delivery, so that's driving your thing. So you need to be able to react to those changes and actually monitor what's going on in your deployments. So mon monitoring of deployments are a big thing. Um, artificial intelligence operations is a big uh, um, topic currently. So how that's driving how your monitoring works or how your monitoring uh, needs to evolve. Uh, ever increasing security threats attacks, we're just getting bombarded from various places. Um, however, all of this is in the context of budget constraints. We're in difficult economic times, so you can't just go and spend millions and millions maybe on monitoring. You need to see how you can manage that uh, investments. 
if it's open source or proprietary both of them will have an influence on you um, so in this context what monitoring do we do we do get and I'm quickly going to give my view or taxonomy of, of monitoring but this out there can uh, that we're interested in and you might have some other views on it but this is how I, uh, I see it and from the readings that I've been doing and research I've been doing is I usually break it down into your infrastructure monitoring so that's your all traditional things so everybody has done Nagios probably in their lifetime Nagios in Singa all these old uh, or not old but previous generation of monitoring so monitoring your op op operating system that's important still networks you have to start monitoring your containers your databases your load balancer application servers all these infrastructure things but in essence what you want to get to I is monitoring your applications because that's the end goal that i think in 2019 you want to get to is how is your application performing because that's the where the user is actually interacting with your your system um we still need to do network performance monitoring, diagnostics, see how your network is performing. Always logs, like we had discussions about uh, if your system goes down, did you have any central logging that you can actually get uh, uh, feedback on what happened to your infrastructure if it disappears or whatever. Um, application performance monitoring and, and we we put a lot of emphasis on that uh, anybody doing IPM at this point okay so you guys know what I'm talking about and yeah and uh, I think that that's very relevant and I and we see there's a lot of shortages in, in the people that we interact with that don't do IPM monitoring they tend to do the infrastructure monitoring but they don't get the same insights into into their applications that I think is required <coughs> But we, and we're going to touch a bit more on, on that. Um, then user experience. IPM does fall into user experience, but I, I brought it out separately to just discuss a few things. So one thing is important for me in, in, in monitoring is your real user monitoring. So actually getting a feel for what the user is experiencing. Enhancing their the applications that they're interacting with is to actually see how do they experience it? Not just monitoring on your servers, but actually get to the client point of view and get that feedback. Uh, when you're doing your uh, real um, IPM monitoring, do you have any real user monitoring also in place? No, okay, that's good. Uh, synthetics monitoring, do you do any of that also with IPM? So I think that's very important, uh, both from a testing point of view. So you bring actions, uh, your testing capabilities from development into your real application and getting some feedbacks from that. <coughs> Sentiment digital experience monitoring. Anybody heard about that or doing any of those? Heard about it. Okay, so that's the more up and coming things. Uh, some of the big providers are trying to invest into that and bring that into place. Um, but it also covers actually the whole user experience monitoring to the next level. It uh, and so my view of it, my summary of it is you actually start bringing in all kinds of business uh, information into your monitoring and you know, answering your technical with the business information. So monitoring your social media to find out if there's any issues with your application and raising that and validating it against your normal IPM monitoring or your network monitoring and see what's happening. So you might have uh, all kinds of social feeds monitor that bring it in or you might have been a ticketing system and you start correlating that and enhancing the feedback to your first line immediately so you don't have they don't have to go check your monitoring it actually brings it in as the tickets are raised so there you need to do a bit of uh, natural language processing that type of thing so that's that's interesting domains and uh, machine learning and uh, ops also gets into to that space then security information event management i think that's also a big topic currently Enhancing all of your monitoring that you've got there to bring your sec security point of view at play. So your security team likes to uh, get their information. So they analyze logs and all the other information to, to get a, a security point of view to see if there's specific attacks or zero uh, day vulnerabilities being exposed through through the logs. And if you're doing security monitoring, 
So, the the way that I see monitoring is you get basically two two types of architectures to your tools. Uh, you get your centralized pilot that's using the pool model. So you got uh, your monitoring infrastructure and it just goes and pulls information from all the various things. And you've got your passive collectors, which is just uh, agents pushing information to either central or distributed uh, monitoring solution. And you also get some of that uses uh, 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 a hybrid approach to it. Um, so my preference is the push model in a contemporary world because you've got uh, microservices and containers and stuff like that. You don't have the ability to go know where all of the things are. By pushing information in, I think it's a, it's a better approach. But that's just my opinion, and especially if you've got all kinds of interesting firewalls, getting into to your monitoring might not be that is, uh, easy if you're in uh, uh, various platforms. Some of the players, uh, there's Elastic, Datadog, Prometheus. Anybody using Prometheus? Okay, yeah, so there's Prometheus. I've added some of the, uh, so Datadoc and New Relic is of obviously uh, more proprietary solutions, but uh, just to compare it with, with the open source uh, vendors out there. And any of you have been following the, the movements in open standards? So what's nice about monitoring is actually there is a number of open standards uh, being followed and being developed to enable monitoring. So open telemet telemetry is uh, now the combination of open tracing and open sensors. And a lot of these vendors are actually implementing it. So that makes it nice and in open community, I'm very glad that these things are happening. And then there's also a big drive in AI and machine learning towards um, monitoring. I need to start moving fast. I've got some time indicators. So application performance monitoring. So application performance me monitoring means that we're starting to monitor from an application point of view, the performance and getting information specifically out of those events. And um, I hope a lot more people will look into it and try and uh, add it. So for instance, here's an example of how it looks like in a new relic, you get something like what's the throughput on your application over the time period. And AppDeck scores is a combination of various things uh, for monitoring, not just using response times. Uh, due to time constraints, I'm not going to go into the detail of that, uh, how that works. But yeah, this is a typical thing for your application performance. You can see, oh, there's actually some error rates. What is happening there? <coughs> and that's a, a typical overview view of uh, uh, APMs. And then you can drill down and get some nice, interesting traces into your application and see exactly the, the flow that has happened in your application and see where the problems are starting to come in. And uh, you can start drill down and you know, you can tell the developers, listen here, you're doing some bad things at this point in time, please optimize your code. And you don't have to thumb suck where the performance issues are. It's actually highlighted nicely in, in the graphs. And for example, here's an exception that does happen. So that you see there's a higher error rate in your application. Go get the detail and get the, the well, maybe it's probably not, okay, is, is it clear from your side? You look a bit, dark. but anyway, there's uh, some uh, code based stack traces that you can look into. And we have found that we can quickly pinpoint issues without having to troll through logs by just looking at the monitoring system and it will drill down to your information rapidly and you can resolve problems within minutes. What we found also with uh, APM is that if we deploy a new version and here's the elastic version of it, so it's something similar there, also the transactions being run, the time it takes requests per minute, etc. It's available in Elastic. But what we found with APM is um, that when we do a, a rapid deployment, within a few minutes, we can find out if there's been changes that's negatively affecting the application and proactively go and resolve it. So if you're in an environment where you, you can do multiple deployments per day, 
this is very important and uh, the team can quickly react and resolve the things. So it changes your deployment uh, approach and uh, the proactively solve problems before it becomes a big problem for your clients or users. Uh, user experience monitoring. So you guys are uh, probably have done this where you can actually see in a web page where is your uh, slowdowns. Is it in your DOM processing or is it the network latency or is it in page rendering? So there's a quick overview of say a transaction from a po user point of view. When you open a, a web page where is the processing issues happening within the browser and not just on your server? So you might have a super duper fast server, but uh, the guys that wrote uh, JavaScript, they didn't write very well JavaScript and through this monitoring, you can actually pick up that type of things. So for instance, here you can see if you drill down is all the resources being loaded and you can see what this there's a DOM processing, there's the page loads, waiting for things, for Ajax, what's the back end? So you can actually see where is your bottlenecks with, within your browser experience. And I think that gives a lot of powerful insights. You can also overlay this with geographical information to see where we need to maybe start adding edge nodes if you're doing content delivery things, uh, and maybe change your data centers if you can see what your uh, geographical information is. So just getting back to the digital experience management, Gardner has released some nice reports um, to see what is the uh, what is digital experience management and where the focus should be uh, in the year that's coming. And you can maybe go read that report. So due to time constraints, I might just quickly skip this and get on to other things and get to Q and A. Um, but this is the big trend uh, probably coming through in the next years that the uh, vendors will be looking into. So sentiment monitoring that we've been talking about. We're trying to do a bit of work around this is where we start monitoring Facebook and Twitter to get some insights from our users, what their experiences and trying to validate and overlay it with our normal IPM stuff and our browser monitoring. Uh, especially where you've got a big distributed network, you want to know what's going on and you, you can't uh, see where the users are having their troubles. You can actually pull this information in and try to optimize it. Um, security information, event management. Uh, so basically, it's just a combination of uh, your security information, your events, getting all the data from the network packets happening, What's the server information, finding correlations, making sure you've got compliance. So it, uh, you can also get it in, at view, compare. Uh, what is the packages installed? Is Are you compliant with it? All these com combinations, you're building your um, network intrusion detection system. All of this information is rapidly being pulled into a single view, specific focused on security. So um, and what's nice about tools like Elastic uh, is they've got this uh, uh, views that already combines that and pulls it from the, all the IPMs and all of that together. Um, but there's obviously other vendors that also do seem specific stuff. Uh, where did that graph go to? Okay, I don't know. Then a big thing I think for for monitoring in 2019 is start adding value to business. So business insights I think is an important point there that needs to be taken is you want to start showing business what is this investment they're doing in the monitoring that they can actually see it. So what you want to show things like conversion rates on uh, on their application. So if you've got an e-commerce site, what is the conversion rate from people going onto your homepage, selecting something in a chart? Is that a cart, putting it into a cart, or they're actually checking it out? What is that conversion? If that starts dropping down after a the release, then you know there's something going wrong. So correlating the technical deployments with the business prices or their changes in the baselines. Is it improving? Is it decreasing? You can give that type of key performance indicators. If you've got downtime, what's the impact on your revenue? And I think that type of insights is important for, for business and you can start using the same tools to enhance that type of things. Um, adding custom monitoring 
for your developers to to highlight your specific competitive edge things and that's important to you i think is very important in 2019 are you guys doing any custom monitoring your applications okay so and i think you've seen the benefits of and are you showing that to business the the custom things yeah and i think that's key that we start doing that okay you want to do q a okay almost there <laughs> um so i think just going beyond monitoring it's important to have a good incident management system in place also have reporting in place you can actually feedback that monitoring information and start looking into AI ops which we had didn't now have time because i've got time constraints um there's an example of uh, some AI ops things starting to happen, maybe in uh, New Relic, where actually, if there's an error, it will also bring in correlations to show, uh, show uh, help you and when you do the analysis to see what was happening concurrently. So key takeaways, monitoring is important. Stakeholders are diverse because you've got security, business, technical people, application developers. So find monitoring that can address everybody's need as much as possible, show the business value by announcing the monitoring to, to actually bring business performance indicators in. Uh, there's more, much more richness in 2019 of things that needs to be monitored and the monitoring tools are becoming much ri more richer and monitoring is evolving on a daily basis so you need to keep track of it and I think we're going to have an interesting time. Is there any questions so sorry I had to rush free may I please yeah. suggest that anybody with questions to come to you directly we have five minutes till the next talk so let's just le let everybody else okay. want to go, go cool so if you feel I to come talk to us we do these type of things on a daily basis and uh, I'd like to hear your experiences and like to hear how what you're using and so forth so that's interesting so thank you for your time I hope I Gave a bit of insights uh, to to what we see as uh, happening in 2019 and to move forward. Cool. Thanks.